Hello, everyone. I'm Jun Yang Lee from Seoul National University. So I'm going to give a talk about safely optimizing casts between pointers and integer. This is a joint work with people from MPI SWS, University of Utah, and Microsoft Research. First of all, unlike assembly, a pointer in LLVM intermediate representation tracks is underlying object and it is called provenance in other languages like C. And this allows LLVM to allow do more optimization on memory related operations such as load and stores and other things. Then we can raise a natural question whether integers in LLVM intermediate representation should also track provenance or not. I'm going to answer this question. So, <clears throat> First of all, let me describe how having provenance in pointers allows more optimizations in LLVM. Let's see this IR example, which basically de declares two variables, P and Q, and compares integer addresses of P plus one and Q. If they are equivalent, it just assigns 10 into P plus one and prints Q zero. Then what LLVM can do is to constant propagate the initial value of Q into the print statement thus removing one load instruction. This optimization seems valid, but actually if pointer is just a pure integer, then we cannot explain this optimization. Let's assume that P and Q are allocated at 100 and 101, then this will be true because they are both 101. So this statement will assign 10 into address 101. So it will print in integer 10. However, after optimization, the program is printing zero, so something bad happened because optimization cannot change the behavior of the input program. The problem with prop regarding pointer as a pure integer is that, as you, oh, sorry. As you see in this example is that we cannot protect accesses from different blocks, like P and Q in this case. In order to resolve this, if we have provenance for pointers, then we can naturally explain this. Now, each pointer tracks what is the base, the base object of the pointer. For example, there are two objects, P and Q, and also each byte records what object is allocated at the address. Again, this comparison becomes true, but now in this statement, P plus one has provenance P. And this statement tries to update the value at address 101 where object Q is allocated. So in this case, we can say that, oh, there is an undefined behavior because there is an object Q, but you are having provenance P. So it is valid for compiler to optimize a program with undefined behavior into any form. So the constant propagation optimization is valid, again, logically. Okay. Until now, I've explained how provenance explains some kind of optimizations like constant propagation. Then what about integers? What happens if we cast a pointer into integer? Does it still track provenance or it just drops provenance? Interesting thing is that this is just not just a theoretical question. Uh, may, remaining this as an uncertain thing can cause miscompilation for a certain program. In order to show that, I will expand the previous example by adding two more optimizations. First one is integer equality propagation, and second one is cast elimination. You can see that only red lines are changed in this example. First, integer equality propagation replaces IQ with an integer casted from P plus one, because IQ equals IP, and IP equals an integer casted from P plus one. Second, Cast elimination removes these two casts, which are in integer to pointer cast followed by pointer to integer cast. And then finally, there is a constant propagation which is explained before. Each optimization seems valid, but miscompilation already happened in this case. The original program should have been printed zero because the optimized program was also printing zero, but it is printing 10 because IQ is an integer casted from Q so this statement successfully updates variable Q. Interesting thing is that we found this miscompilation bug in both LLVM and GCC. Yep. So 
which path between these three paths is responsible for the miscompilation. And our observation was that it depends on the memory of, uh, it depends on the model of integer. If integer does carry provenance, then we cannot explain integer equality propagation. On the other hand, if integer does not carry a provenance, then we cannot explain cast elimination. So let me explain why. If integer carries provenance, then replacing IQ with an integer casted from P plus one is incorrect because IQ is an integer casted from Q. So IQ has provenance Q, meaning that it is pointing to object Q. But after optimization, the integer casted from P plus one has provenance P. So integer equality propagation may change the behavior of the program. On the other hand, if integer does not carry provenance, then cast elimination is the incorrect optimization. Before optimization, the casting p plus one into integer loses provenance because integer cannot have provenance. So this statement can somehow access another object rather than p. But after optimization, p plus one is pointing to object p. So this statement, this statement has to update object p. Therefore, if integer does not carry provenance, then cast elimination may do something wrong. So which integer memory should it choose? There are two choices. First one is integer without provenance, and second one is, sorry, first one is integer with provenance, and second one is integer without provenance. And our observation was that integer with provenance model is a bit unnatural to explain many integer optimizations. For example, it's hard to explain integer equality propagation as it described before, and also it becomes a bit hard to explain many other transformations, such as uh, transformation between i plus j minus k and i plus j minus k. In order to explain this, we have to define what is the meaning of adding two provenances, like, and also subtracting two different objects, which is a bit uh, unnatural. Also, in certain precondition, we can optimize the left program into the right program, but in order to make this optimization correct, we have to define what is the meaning of casting an integer with provenance into floating point. So also, if floating point starts to have provenance, then it becomes really complicated because there are so many operations on floating points, including operations defined in intrinsics. Therefore, our suggestion is simple. We just suggest the integer to be pure integers and pointers to be pointers. In other words, we chose integer without provenance model. So let me describe this model a bit more by introducing uh, three things. First, what is the exact meaning of casting between pointers and integers? Second, what are the problematic optimizations which cannot be supported anymore with integer without provenance model? Third, how can we recover performance after disabling these optimizations by adding alternative transformations between pointers and integers? Yeah, let's go to the first thing. Yeah, for the semantics of cast, we define it as follows. Pointer to integer cast just remove provenance, meaning that the resulting integer is just a pure integer. Second, integer to pointer cast gain full provenance, meaning that it can access any object using that pointer. But you may feel like it's a bit dangerous to adopt the notion of full provenance because it, may, it seems like it may break the protection of the variable. So what I mean is that, let's assume that there is an unescaped local variable, and then there is some kind of unknown function which tries to guess the integer address of the unescaped local variable and somehow try to update the value. We definitely don't want to allow that kind of things to be happen because we like to support optimizations like mem rest and also stored load forwarding and that kind of thing. Our solution is we can re regain protection from unknown accesses by exploiting non-deterministic allocation, meaning that the address of the uh, variable is non-deterministically chosen, so it cannot be guessed unless it is escaped. Second, how can you perform inbound checking? In other words, in other words, get limit in inbounds uh, operation on full provenance pointers. We, our solution is that 
we record inbound offset at the full prominence pointer. And when the pointer is dereferenced, we check whether the history of the inbound offsets all fit into, into the single object. In this way, we can support inbound checking again. OK. Then now, now let me explain two, two optimizations which are unsound in our, um, our model. First one is cast elimination, as we've described before. So before optimization, P2 has full provenance. But after optimization, it may have provenance, meaning that it may point to some object, meaning that the behavior of the program may change after eliminating the cast. Second, transforming integer comparison into pointer comparison. In before optimization, it is comparing two integers. But after removing two pointer to integer cast, it is comparing two pointers, which have provenance. Therefore, the behavior of the program may change because uh, it is valid for compiler to uh, somehow use, exploit the provenance of pointers and yeah, yield the result. OK, now I introduce two kind of representative optimizations which are unsound, but naively disabling, naively disabling those doesn't work because it may cause some kind of performance issue. Cast elimination removes Cast elimination is the first optimization in the previous two examples. It removes significant portion of casts. And disabling cast elimination hinders other optimizations because pointer to integer casting makes variables escaped. And also, integer to pointer cast is regarded as returning a pointer that points to an unknown object. Also, empirically, it also causes slowdown in several benchmarks like Perbench and Blender in spec 2017. So how can we address this issue? Our solution is twofold. First one is that uh, we can make LLVM do not generate uh, cast between pointer and integer pointer and integer types in the first place. What we what we observed was that actually majority of casts are introduced by LLVM, not by programmers. So I will introduce how we can address this issue by introducing new features. Second one is to allow the previous optimization conditionally. And we can do this by developing an analyzer to check such condition. OK, now on I will explain how we can reduce the number of pointer in to integer cast. And it is by introducing a, a pointer subtraction operation, so, which is called PSUB. The definition of PSUB is as follows. If pointer P and Q point to the same object, or either P or Q has a full provenance, then subtracting two pointer is just a subtraction of two integer addresses. If P and Q point to other objects, then the result is just poison. The advantage of using PSUB is that PSUB does not escape underlying objects of P and Q if they don't have full provenance. Second, in order to reduce integer to pointer casts, we can stop canonicalizing loads and stores as integers. Let's assume that there is a program which has two loads. Then GBN can optimize this program into the following codes, which contains into PTR cast. Interesting thing what we've observed was that actually majority of the cases are not written by, this case is not written by programmer, but rather it is done by canonicalization of certain loads and stores. So you can see that the first load is optimized into the load of integer type, but the second load couldn't due to some reason. So our suggestion to this problem is to adopt a new data type, which is in this case D64. So let me compare the D64 with I64. This, in case of D64, the, data, the variable which has this type can have provenance, but it does not support integer operations. On the other hand, I64 cannot have provenance, but it supports integer operations. So unlike cast between integer and pointers, the cast between data type and pointer still preserve provenance, still gaining the precision. Yeah. For the experimentation, we just disabled this 
canonicalization, canonicalization pass in order to see, to see the words slow down for experimentation. Finally, we can conditionally allow cast elimination. So if two pointers P and Q are pointing to the same underlying object, then it is valid to remove this uh, cast round trip when it, when it, it is used by integer, uh, comparison operation and also pointer subtraction operation. The reason is that even if the casts are removed, the comparison still just compares the relative offsets of, from the object, even if the casts are removed. So the result is the same after optimization. Okay. Until, until now, we've explained, I've explained three possible choices, uh, three possible um, um, ways to reduce the number of pointer and integer casts. And I'm going to introduce the result of experimentation by showing the number of casts as well as the slowdown. We've implemented our model on LBM 8.0 and gradually updated the model by showing how, how things change. For example, how the number of casts change. First of all, I disabled unsound optimizations such as cast elimination and holding the comparison into pointer. And then I added P sub operation and also stopped canonicalization of load and stores into integer types. And then finally, I conditionally allowed cast elimination. <clears throat> After implementing all these things, we could reduce the majority number of pointer to integer cast and integer to pointer cast compared to the baseline, which is LBM 8.0. And this is the result of the performance speed up. <clears throat> So positive number means faster. So first of all, you can see that all the benchmarks in SPEC 2017 has less than 0.5% slowdown. And interestingly, for benchmark Zalan CBMK, it had about 3.5% speed up, but I couldn't figure out why. For nightly test, it had about 0.1% average slowdown for benchmarks with uh, emitted different assembly from the baseline, and the spectrum was about 1% uh, speed up to 3.6% uh, slowdown. Yeah, I think this is acceptable. So the conclusion is that the notion of provenance helps compiler to more optimizations on pointer, but propagating provenance into integer uh, works badly with existing integer optimizations. So we suggest separating pointers and integers conceptually, and we show how we can regain performance after removing invalid optimizations. So more information can be found on this GitHub link, and currently we are updating a live, which is an LLVM uh, optimization verifier for LLVM intermediate representation to support pointer and integer casts. Thank you for listening. So we have five minutes for questions and answers. There is a mic here and a mic over there. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, so one question. Currently, there is a discussion about introducing pointer provenance explicitly into the IR to deal with restrict qualifiers in C, C++, local restrict qualifiers, and actually make um, restrict qualifiers and arguments sound. Um, so have you seen that discussion? Could you like tell me if that somehow like, interferes with this? Oh, OK. So uh, I've never heard about the discussion, but my feeling, uh, my, my impression is that, so it is about introducing the operation in source level language, right? So it is introducing feature to C language, but it is uh, what I'm going to address is about the semantics of LBM IR. And what I found was that actually the semantics of LBM IR and C should have been a bit different in, due to some subtle reasons. For example, in case of C language, we don't want to support, we don't need to support some kind of reordering of pointer comparison or like, yeah, that kind of thing. But Currently, LBM regards that pointer comparison can be freely relocated inside the program, right? So uh, I think it is kind of a, yeah, it is very interesting issue. And 
and it'll be great whether it can be also adopted into LLVM by checking whether this kind of criteria can be met as well. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that later. Uh, nobody has a question, I could just like specify. Like, one idea of is the load operation will get, have two pointers as inputs. Like one that tells you what the actual value is, which could be like optimized as we do it right now, and one that gives you like provenance information of where does this pointer actually originate from. So you can tie it to a restrict declaration. And then you basically get more provenance information. Would that help you? Like if, if I, like even if, if we do cast eliminations, we would ha still ha know where a pointer actually orina originates from. Even if we cast it to an integer, cast it back, and all of that. So we would keep provenance explicitly in the AR. That is one, what we want to do. Uh, so uh, maybe I misunderstood your uh, question, but does it mean that if um, in certain, even if the provenance is propagated across cast, still we can support some kind of optimization? So in, in this case, actually, a variable may have more than one provenance, so okay. It's mm. fine, yeah, it could have, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So the one problem with the semantics is that actually it, is, it becomes hard to reorder integer to pointer casting with memory allocation. Yes. So let's assume that there are two mollocks which somehow allocates two blocks in an adjacent manner. And then if you, after the allocation, if you do the integer pointer casting, you will get the two provenances. But if you reorder the integer to pointer cast before the allocation, you wouldn't get the provenance. So it becomes a bit hard to explain that case. Any more questions? Well, let's thank again uh, Yuneong. Yeah.